We give tropical storms and hurricanes names because it's easier to keep track of them, right? But recently you may have heard the phrase potential tropical cyclone, a tad complicated to recite over and over, but it is important to understand. Let's take our most recent example, Gordon. Before Gordon was Gordon, the National Hurricane Center deemed the system potential tropical cyclone 7. There was high confidence it would become a tropical storm, but it just wasn't quite there yet and was already impacting the Bahamas and parts of Florida. So why call it potential tropical cyclone 7? First of all, this is all still very new to the National Hurricane Center issuing their first ever potential tropical cyclone advisory just last year. They were created to provide more detailed guidance on systems that have a chance of intensifying and bringing tropical storm or hurricane conditions to land within 48 hours. Now they are potential cyclones for a reason. Gordon, for example, had winds of 30 to 35 miles per hour while it was potential tropical cyclone 7. Some folks on my Facebook page even asking why is this just not a tropical depression? Well, it's because it technically couldn't be considered a cyclone just yet. Gordon had still lacked a clear and closed center of circulation. So by calling these systems potential tropical cyclones, the NHC issues official intensity and track forecast, meaning the National Weather Service is then able to put tropical storm or hurricane watches and warnings out Boom, you have a domino effect. So once those watches and warnings are issued, local government and emergency management can take action. Hopefully then, those who are going to be impacted can make necessary preparations sooner than they would have without a potential tropical cyclone advisory. In the studio, I'm meteorologist Lauren Routenkranz for First Coast News on your side.